I'm Sashi Day, and on this episode of Maximum Foodie, I'm in Bangkok. I've started off my journey by meeting Chef Tan, one of the city's brightest culinary stars. Tan's been showing me around his hometown. Mom and pop places that he loves and make this city his home. We've parted ways with a promise to meet back up later. So today, I'm going to check in at some of my favorite spots in the city. The Sukhothai is the definitive place where I like to hang my hat when I'm in Bangkok. It's my home away from home. It could be the spacious grounds, the five-star luxury, the organic gardens on site, or their expansive chocolate buffet. Yeah, it's probably because of the chocolate buffet. The Sukhothai offers a wealth of dining options. This is Celadon, one of Bangkok's most popular Thai restaurants. And this is Chef Rosarin's domain. I wanted to peep into her world of cooking. Just like Tan is all about pushing Thai cuisine in a new direction, Rosarin is taking the contrary approach. This is something I want to learn about. And to do that, of course, as usual, we head to the market. This place is a little bit more upscale than Klong Tui Market, which Tan and I checked out. But don't let the cleanliness fool you. Like most Asian markets, there's seafood here that will make your jaw drop. We're here for a quick mission. Just two ingredients. Giant river prawns. Look at these beauties. And watermelon. Rosary knows her fishmonger, so she puts in an order and we're off to the races. There's work to be done at Celadon. Celadon has a garden on site with all the herbs you can think of. This is indeed Rosarin's sharpest tool in the shed. You'll soon see why. First in the menu is grilled river prawn. I can hardly wait. The prawn gets prepped. Just look at that row. That's seafood gold. Immediately, it's put on the grill, foil on top, to distribute the heat evenly. Now comes the flavor. This one is a fermented small chim. This one is kalanka, you know that? And then chili, lemongrass. This one is pinker loose. In the mortar goes the lemongrass and ginger. It's all done manually, ain't no blenders here. Chili, galangal, Rin mashes it up some more. And this is interesting, the spice grinding happens in stages. The colors on that are beautiful. Yeah. It's so vibrant. It's just like coming alive. Fermented. Fermented shim, small shim. And is this true, Rin? I've heard that these black dots are the eyes of the shrimp. Is that true? Yes. Yeah? Oh, you don't are, are you? Yeah, eyes. you're impressed, right? <laughs> Our paste is then transferred to a pan where it's gently fried. And then you put a bit of the coconut milk. Of course. Is there a name for this mixture that you made in, in Thai cooking? It's the, uh, I call this one, is the uh, lot. Like, you know, in, in uh, Bali, in Balinese cooking, they call it bumbu. In my language, Bengali, we call it batna. Batna. So it's all B. All right. But essentially, we're all the same culture, right? Bali, Thailand. And then in, uh, India. India, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Palm sugar to neutralize the salt. And lastly, some tamarind juice. Like any good sauce, that's going to reduce down. Yes, I can reduce the sauce. With the prawns cooked to perfection, it's time to slather the sauce on. How good is that? Some finishing touches with a blowtorch to get the roe cooked just right. Grilled river prawns, as fresh as it gets and as good as it gets. This dish is piping hot, so I'm going to have to wait to get my grubby hands on it. Moving on to the next dish. This one, we can eat on the spot, soon as it's prepped. Good, because I'm hungry. Today we can do the watermelon with the catch fish. First time I put salt in the middle, and then a bit of sugar. Capilam leaf. 
Okay, and then hit together. After that, you can see it is a mix together already. I will put is a half spoon of the garlic. Yes, and then deep fried shallots inside, and then hit together again. And then we can put the cat uh, fish. The powder is it's, the, it's actually powdered fish. Yeah? Yes, it's and, a powder fish. And what before, fish are you using? Before I make the powder, it's normally in the Thai people. It's the own generation. They put uh, liver feet on the charcoal. On charcoal. Okay. Yeah, and then make it dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after that, take like a cheddar, make it the powder. Oh, yeah. I see. And what fish is that originally? This one is a uh, we call is a uh, catfish. Catfish. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Wow. And then so heat together with the Thai herb. You will see like a powder. Yeah, pretty much everything's just fused together into a powder. Yep. Wow. The mortar and pestle it's used a lot in Thai cooking. This it's apparatus. Yes. yes. You use it a lot in Thai yes. cooking. You know why? Why? Because it's a, this one is a, can make the powder, and then the, when you you hit with the monta, it's yeah. a, the herb and the essence become the, the out. oils and the everything oil, get, the yeah, get out extracted. Yeah, yeah. 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 smell this. Yeah, you can smell kapiram. Oh, kapir yeah. lime. That's like that, the strongest yes, essence of kapir lime. Yes, and the garlic lime. and the chalot. Yeah. yeah. Now, why did you think about mixing watermelon with this? Because it's a. Uh, when I was young in the summertime in Thailand, mm -hmm. is uh, I saw my grandma. It's always is this one with this one. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. And then I asked my grandma, why you eat the uh, fish with the fish, fish with, yeah. with, with the dry fish? And then my grandma said, in summertime, the watermelon can cover your cool. body yeah. to cool down wow. your body. That's why. That's so amazing. That lineage passed on yes. to you, and now you get to pass it on to your diners. Yes. Amazing. Fresh watermelon is delicately sliced and shaped into a cylinder, and in goes the dried herbs and fish powder Rosarin just concocted. Next is a surprising and unique touch. This one is uh, the candon, smoky of the flower, the Thai flower. As Rosarin said, each dish she makes is inspired by her grandmother something she grew up with. Now I can assure you Granny wasn't plating it as beautiful as Rosarin is, but the point is she's using those old school techniques that she learned in her childhood. And she infuses new world techniques such as this. Wow. You can see the smoke, the smoke of the flavor is inside of the pim, uh, melon. It's just mixing the me yeah, melons, may, absorbing yeah. it all in. Yeah. Yeah. You can see? I can totally see that. That yes. is so exciting. <laughs> yeah. And you have a little mint leaf on top, yeah? Yep. The mint leaf make your cool as well. Cool, when cool you down, yeah. yeah. Mint and watermelon is such a good combo. Yes. Oh my goodness. All right. Shall we okay. dig in? Yes, please. Mmm. Okay. It's, it's so hard to describe. It's so playful. Crispy, fresh watermelon. And then a bit of spicy. It's, it's yeah, it yeah. gets you in the back of your tongue. Yeah, back it's of just your building, tongue, yeah. Building of spicy spiciness. Of the it's not for the chili. Yeah, yeah. Yes. One more bite. It's so amazing that the smoke gets infused that fast into the whole dish. It was like what, maybe 15 seconds? Yes. And you immediately taste you, the smoke. You can feel the smoke of the melon. Wow. I'm yeah. amazed at that yes. quickly. Wow. Yes. This is like, this speaks summertime to me, this dish, you know? It's total summertime on a plate. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Elegant, playful, it harks back to old school, traditional Thai techniques. We're still not done yet. Rosarin's got one more dish to show off. 